Hi, I'm Emily, a contributing blogger at SecondarySolutionsBlog.com, and today's video tutorial is about how to use Evernote in the classroom with students to help them organize their notes, images, PDFs, PowerPoints, Word documents, and more in order to effectively use their resources and study efficiently. Um, as many schools, including mine, begin to allow and require tablets and laptops for school use, it's going to be important for us as teachers to know which applications help to harness the power of those devices more than just a glorified textbook or a way to Google things. Hopefully this video tutorial helps to cut down some of the research and testing that we'll have to do as teachers to stay up with all the wonderful applications that will be coming out for our students' technology use. The first thing you do is go to evernote.com and you can create either a free account or a premium account which is $45 a year and I'll explain the features of the premium account towards the end of this video once you kind of get an idea of why you might want those features. So once you're here you will just go to create an account and then you'll go ahead and sign up with your email address, username, password, You'll have to do a little CAPTCHA here and register it and it's as simple as that. Very quick, very easy register. So I set this up as if I were a student and this is my interface here. This is what it would look like if I were on a computer or a laptop. The most important things to know how to do are in this little um, sidebar here, creating notes and notebooks especially, most important. So I'm going to start by looking at my notebooks. So I've created this as if I were a student, and so I've got my Algebra 2 notebook, chemistry, my contacts. I've got my English 11 stack of notebooks, and then within my English 11 stack I've got maybe some of the units my teacher is teaching about, like the Depression Era Lit, Grammar, Poetry, Transcendentalism, Vocabulary. Then I also have a personal notebook a random school notebook, Spanish 3, to-dos, U.S. history, and water polo. So those are my notebooks here. If I wanted to create a new notebook, I click New Notebook here. And let's just say I joined Academic Decathlon. And I need to have a notebook to keep my Academic Decathlon thing straight. Now that I have my Academic Decathlon Notebook created, I can double click on it and now I'm inside the notebook. I just create, click New Note in Academic Decathlon and within this note we'll just say I went to my first meeting and I found out the topics for the 2013-2014 school year are genetics, uh, the sun also rises, music, and economics of World War One and trig. And these are my subjects that I kind of want to just take note of while I'm at my first academic decathlon meeting. It can also um, have reminders on it, which is really nice in case you want to say, create a new note for your English class and your teacher announces that there's going to be a test next week, you can create a reminder at a date and it will show you on your device and also on your um, email if you choose. You can also annotate it if you get uh, another app called Skitch. Um, you can do a voice recording or you could um, do a picture. You could take a picture and it would just show up in your webcam or you can attach a file if maybe somebody emailed you a file or if they had it on their website or something like that. Within the notes, you can also make to-do lists. So if you were like, um, things to study for next week, and then you make yourself a little to-do list, like Hemingway's life, um, cosine and sine, and tangent and then as you know that you've studied them you can just check them off. You can also uh, play around with bullet points or highlighting or colors or uh, create columns if you need something like that. So within the notes it's pretty it's already pretty um, powerful just to take notes while you're at a meeting or in a class. 
And then we have other things that we can do besides just take a regular note. So let me show you one of the ways that this is a huge, powerful tool, not just for taking basic notes in classes or meetings, but um, also for incorporating a lot of different media and keeping it all together. So I told you that I had created these um, notebooks already for the students and I want to show you how I created a stack. If I took the academic decathlon and I dragged it on top of let's say random school now I've got a stack and if I double click on there there are two different notebooks within that stack. I can, That way I can keep all my units together or things that are similar together if I want to. So let's look at other ways we can add things. So let's just say I'm in a class and my teacher is writing something on the board and I don't have time to copy it all or maybe I was absent so I come by after school and I take a picture of it. And so I have my picture here. If I take that picture, I can just drag it right into wherever I want. So this, these notes are about depression era literature. And there it is. Um, it's going to give me a note that says text and handwriting recognition is performed on the server. So if you want to be able to search the words on the actual image, you'll have to sync. And I'll show you how to sync in just a minute. So there's my picture. Um, I can also do this for anything kind of in my life. If I have tickets to a game and I want to make sure that I remember where I'm sitting and everything like that, I want to have it on my smartphone, I just can drag the, a picture of the tickets uh, to my personal um, full, or notebook and then I have it all set up. If my teacher has something like um, a PowerPoint on her his or her website or they email it to me or we have something like that I can take a PowerPoint and drag it into a note also and that way it's keeping all my things that are the same it's keeping them together so inside here I have a To Kill a Mockingbird notes that I took during class I have a picture of the teachers notes that she took during class and then I also have the PowerPoint that maybe she published on her website. The same thing goes for Word documents. So if a teacher has a grammar review document that she puts on her website or um, something like that, you can just drag it into grammar here. And I've got that grammar review. I can click on it and I can see it exactly how I'm supposed to do. If I click on it again, it'll open in Microsoft Word. And so that way I can keep all of my information together. If you see inside my grammar review, I've got a gra two documents, grammar final review, grammar unit six review, I've got a picture, the substitute wrote on the board, maybe what um, lessons we were supposed to do. And so I have that, and I, so I keep everything so organized like this. The other thing I can do uh, with things like that are really pressing or really important is I can create a shortcut. So all you do to create a shortcut to create it so that it's easy to get to it so you don't have to click through a lot of things, let's just say I know I'm going to have a test on To Kill a Mockingbird soon, and I know I have to study this PowerPoint, that's what my teacher said, so I drag it into where it says shortcuts and now it's in the shortcuts and so I it's right there for me to remember exactly what I should be doing and then here's my homework which is a checklist that I could easily check things off when I'm done with them or set reminders now that you see how to make notebooks and create stacks and notes let's talk about another really powerful part of this program which is the ability to search all your notes even within images and so let's just say I'm studying for my final exam in English and I'm trying to remember what poem the teacher said had spatial metaphor in it so I can search my notes for the word spatial and the program is going to recognize out of all of my notes which ones have the word spatial in it even if it's handwritten it knew that. So this is a picture that the student would take of the board um, 
or of the teacher's notes and the program was able to recognize that word and it highlights it for you to make sure that it's the correct one. Maybe you want to try something else and you want to look at Mockingbird. You can see where within your notes here it had to kill a mockingbird. So you can search everything which makes it really easy to keep track of things and not lose them. Another thing you can do uh, for a particular class is if you wanted to look at the English 11 stack, say you just wanted to view all the notes, you didn't want to look at them as separate notebooks, grammar, poetry, vocabulary, you wanted to look at all your notes because your final exam is coming up. You can click on it and then you can scroll through all your notes and see all the different things that you have to get ready for the test. The next really powerful tool for Evernote is the ability to share notes. So let's just say I was in class and I got all these notes from my teacher, but my best friend was absent. She was sick, homesick, and I want to send it to her. So I could click on this. I could post that note to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. I could email it to her separately. I could copy and share the URL to a clipboard, so just send her a link. The same thing I could do with notebooks. So if I wanted to send her my grammar notebook here, I just click on the send, and I could either invite individuals to share it, just put in their email address, um, they can only view it if you have the free version. They can also edit it if you have the pay version. Or I could create a public link that I could then put out so that multiple people could look at that link to my notes. This would be especially helpful from teacher to student. The teacher could create a public link of her notes that students then could access. You'll notice a few times while I'm doing this quick tutorial that this little sync button right here is going off. This little sync button syncs your Evernote to every device that you've installed it on. And it's free for all your devices or if you pay the one time $45 per year, it's $45 for all the devices that you have. So I'm going to show you in a second how I can open this up on my iPad because that's more realistic for my students um, to have an iPad in class adding these things and then having access to it completely updated, completely synced on their home computer. And it automatically syncs to almost all devices including computers, phones, tablets, basically anything that's web enabled can have Evernote on it and can be synced in real time, all the time, automatically. Now I've switched over to my iPad so that you can see how it seamlessly syncs all of your notes and all of your media um, on different devices. So I'm going to click on the Evernote app and I can see all of my notes here synced uh, from the ones that I made on the computer. I can see all of my notebooks if I'm looking for a particular notebook. Um, I can see tags if I've tagged my um, tagged my particular notes with tags. I can see their tags or I can see the places that I wrote the note in case I'm looking for a note that I know I wrote when I was in Ventura, California. You can see all the places you've ever written notes. So let's just say I'm going to go to my English 11 stack and I'm going to go to poetry and let's say that I need to create a new note so I just click the, click the little plus and I'm going to create a new note. That note might be a picture, it might be an image, it might be voice or I might just type in it. But let's say that I was in class and I took notes on my book for a particular poem and I don't want to rewrite them into my notes and I don't want to have to lug my book all around. Um, here's how I could just take a quick picture. Just click on the camera and focus it at my book with my notes in it. Take the picture and then I'm going to click the little check mark that I'm done and now that is my note and I can give it a title if I want and then I can just close it and I have that note right there in my poetry section. For about $5 a month or $45 a year, you can have some premium features like access to your notes offline, additional mobile security, increased 
uploads searching within PDFs, similar to how you can search within images, and seeing older versions of the note, so the note history. This is really just the beginning of the power that this program Evernote holds for students' organization and for students' ability to consolidate all kinds of media that we're going to be giving them as we move into this um, era of technology in the classroom. If you have any questions or comments, please visit us at secondarysolutionsblog.com. Thanks!